Hello! My name's Derek Bailey. I've been a wood turner now for over 40 years and taught for the last eight of them. Uh, well, the journey is over. Uh, the jig is now finished to, what I, to the extent that I'm not prepared to do any more to it. Uh, it's been a fun, it's been fun. Uh, a lot of teething troubles along the way. It's not quite perfect yet, but it's producing adequate results. Will I ever use it? It'll be in the back of my mind, I think. It'll end up in the corner of my workshop and will be uh, called upon from time to time, I've no doubt, when I can't do anything else. Uh, but it's been worthwhile. Uh, it's not cost too much, around about uh, £20, £30 perhaps, to make, but a lot of labour involved. But I've enjoyed it and I hope those who have stayed with me during this journey have enjoyed the, uh, the travel. But that's it from now on. This is my last video regarding this jig. Uh, I've finally made a cup and saucer which you'll see at the end of the video. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's get on. After I've finished uh, with 180 grit abrasives, I'm now going over to uh, Yorkshire Grit, <coughs> which looks like a polish from the uh, from the film, but it's not a polish. It's an actual uh, something like tea cup you use for cars. It's uh, got some pumice in it, so it's an abrasive, and the advantage of it it doesn't cause any dust, and it gives quite a good finish, although it does darken the timber somewhat. I use cellulose uh, sanding seal and spray it on, it dries more quickly and is easy and gets into the crevices far easier than wiping it on. I use cellulose malamine on most of my items for finishing it. Uh, it dries very quickly, easy to apply and cures to a hard finish. I'm putting three quarts of malamine on here and uh, using the sawdust to just uh, create a key for each quart. I'm checking the bottom of the uh, saucer runs true because it's only small jaws in the chuck and it's easy to get it running out of true, especially when I'm going to create quite a thin uh, thin wall. Uh, it'll be more obvious if I get it wrong. I'm using the tool rest at the bottom of the saucer and looking at the change in gaps as I rotate the saucer by hand. It's very easy to get into the habit of not checking the depth of the recess at the bottom of, of any work that you do that's held in the chuck. And then when you turn the front face, you end up with a hole. Uh, I prefer not to tur turn pole or mints. Uh, they're not quite as attractive. As you can see, uh, as I'm turning, um, the disadvantage of a very small powered lathe is that it hasn't got a lot of torque at low revolutions so I adjust the speed a little bit to give it a little more oomph so that I can take bigger cuts. Uh, 
the general rule of thumb when you're turning spindles or bowls to uh, very thin dimensions where a large amount of vibration becomes possible you leave as much wood on as, as long as possible After creating a slight slope towards the centre of the saucer, I'm now creating the, the, the bottom of the saucer a flat part so that the cup can rest on it without wobbling. Again, keeping my eye on the thickness of the saucer at the bottom due to uh, the recess being held in the chuck. Here, uh, I've decided to just create a very thin bead to separate the, uh, the cup resting area from the rest of the saucer. I'm using a round nose scraper to uh, create a smooth transition between the bead, edge of the bead and the rest of the saucer. I'm using a screw chisel here to act as a negative rate scraper. I could have used a spindle gouge, a bowl gouge would be a bit big, but I could have used a spindle gouge to touch it up but I was too lazy to go and get one. Back to my dust-free Yorkshire grit and uh, <coughs> it's very nice to use and uh, very pleasant smell actually. Uh, that's the standard, uh, standard one but I've got the microfine white one to do as a, as a second application. I prefer to use Yorkshire grit when the wood is stationary. It gives it time to penetrate the fibres of the wood and it makes the uh, pumice more efficient when I start using it with the lathe switched on. As before I'm using sawdust to uh, give it a key for the san uh, cellulose sanding sealer and cellulose malamine. I'm applying three uh, coats of malamine in order to achieve uh, a protection for when I uh, colour the engraving with some acrylic paint and because it's got three coats of malamine I can wipe off the residue without staining the surrounding wood.
came across a, a four-pronged uh, old drive centre I must have had lying around. Uh, <coughs> it's great, it just fits into the end of the chuck. Without taking the chuck off, I can now turn between centres. Here I'm just making a dovetail tenon so that I can hold one end of the uh, of the blank in the, the chuck so that I can bore out the rest of it to make the cup. I always get into the habit of making the end uh, nice and flat and truing it up. If you don't it uh, tends, tends to come back and bite you later on. Because the lathe has low power motor uh, I use various stages of forcing a bit to get me up to a size that's practical so that I can use the carbide tipped square end scraper which is a bit thick in section and tends to bind on the bottom of the uh, bore so I have to produce a reasonably large hole before I can use it. It's a bit long winded I know but uh, <laughs> this lathe is a little underpowered and you can't just uh, create large cuts when you're boring out wood so I have to be patient and uh, respect the little motor that's running the lathe. When you're boring a reasonably deep hole, one essential thing is uh, getting a light in there. It's, <laughs> it doesn't take long for a shadow to obscure your view when you're boring it and, and you want a nice clean bottom at the bottom of the hole without the dreaded little pimple that's often the case when you can't see what you're doing. I love using the screw chisel, it's the most versatile tool in the armoury of a wood turner. But it's easy to get out of uh, practice with it if you're not using it often. Uh, <coughs> and especially if you've essential tremors like me, you've got to be very careful when you're doing delicate beads etc. I'm just checking the diameter at the bottom of the cup so that it fits within the allocated area on the saucer. Now 
now the cup has a thin wall, vibration is really rearing its ugly head, so I've put a bung in the end to, to uh, dampen down the vibration. Now I've created the outside shape, which is a nice slow tapering one. I have to match that up the, in the bore, and I use that by using a gauge to give me a rough estimate of uh, any slight differences in thickness, and then using my fingers. It's nothing. The feel is often quite accurate. I don't like sharp corners at the bottom of uh, bores in uh, cups or anything where liquid's going. Uh, it can attract uh, a lot of uh, um, bacteria. So I like to have a smooth round uh, transition between the, the side, wa side walls of the bore and the bottom of the cup. So I'm using a half round scraper to achieve this. I should have used Yorkshire grit during the abrasive process, but I simply forgot. I must have got carried away with the moment and my impatience to finish. Again, my favourite combination, uh, cellulose sanding sealer and malamine, but on the outside surface only. On the inside surface, I want to use food safe product, which is uh, walnut oil. Although, having said that, I ha it has to be informed that uh, we don't want people with nut allergies drinking from this cup. Although walnut oil is food safe, and it dries quite hard to a resilient finish. To be double safe, it would be best to use mineral oil, although it leaves a dull finish and needs to be replenished from time to time. I'm setting the stops on the jig to uh, create a pattern that I'd uh, explored earlier which you can see in the top left hand corner. Uh, some of the stops need to be arranged in such a way that I, I, can't, I can't exceed the dimensions of the saucer. After trial and error using burrs and uh, various small uh, router bits, 
Uh, I found these, uh, which I've shown in the bottom right-hand corner, I found these bits from Amazon, which are solid carbide, I believe, uh, to be quite sharp and retain their edges pretty well. And the burring of the wood as they cut isn't too severe. I'm trying to show a more detailed appreciation of the cutting action of the uh, bit in the grinder, uh, in the annulus. Uh, the depth of cut of the bit is determined by the, this, that little white thing you can see in the centre of the gland. Is, in the centre of the annulus is actually the electrical gland. And by rotating the tip clockwise or anti-clockwise I can determine the penetration of the tip of the bit into the wood with the advantage that it can follow the undulations or the contours of, of the shape of the uh, project that you've turned. I must point out that I'm using a grinder which isn't all that powerful. It's not a dedicated router so I can't take large amounts of wood off in one cut. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, concentrating on just engrave, engraving uh, the uh, saucer and then hopefully successfully fill the slight uh, cuts uh, with a contrasting colour. achieve success with this method it's essential that we get a highly uh, highly polished surface uh, which has hardened uh, sufficiently so that the residue of the uh, of the acrylic paint can be wiped off and just leaving the uh, engraving colored even with three coats of malamine lacquer it's still not as sufficient enough for a stain free finish if you notice there's a slight white tinge on the area where the engraving is. So I revert back to very fine abrasives starting at 600 and working backwards until uh, the uh, white uh, blemish has been removed without removing the engraving itself. If I started off on a higher grit, on a, a coarser grit there's a risk that the engraving could be removed. Now I'm engraving the circumference of the cup, I have to be careful that the movement of the annulus isn't too great so that the cutter comes away from the wood. So I have to restrict the actual engraving design to quite small uh, amplitudes.
here I'm adjusting the stops to facilitate more engraving at the top portion of the cup. In order to stop slight lifting of the jig away from the bed of the lathe as I move the annulus downwards, I've incorporated a small clamp uh, that uh, secures the base of the jig to the bed. Changing the cutter is quite a simple process with this grinder. I just press the red button, it engages a stop and it allows me to remove the, uh, the collet with a spanner, etc. Now I'm moving to a slightly larger cutter to, uh, to make the flutes. I, it was necessary for me to remove the electrical cable gland that's in at the moment and replace it with a larger one. Uh, but the same threads are in the uh, annulus still apply to the larger gland. Even though the gland cap dictates the depth of cut. I still need to focus on the movement of the uh, base of the jig so that it lines up in the same direction of the stops. This gives a, a, a double emphasis on accuracy. When I stain the saucer, I stain the whole engraving and I think because of that some of the paint dried onto the varnish which made it more difficult to remove the residue. Here I'm just painting each engraving section and removing the residue each time. Keep the ground in sight. 
Love the world, but keep the sky on your mind. 